Well hi there everyone, Farm Sim Gamer here and welcome to my new series on Carmsden Farm. Now before I go any further, I just want to say a very big thank you to Oxygen David for creating once again another fantastic map. Now, I think it's fair to say we've had to wait a little while for this one to come out, but it's been very much worth the wait. Uh, so big thanks to Oxygen J uh, David um, because I know I'm going to have a huge amount of fun playing on this one. Um, now the great thing about it as well is that it's based in a real location and I'll get into that in a bit more detail later um, but it always helps bring things to life and what I hope to do with this series is follow the day-to-day -day operation of an established and sizeable family farm in the Cotswolds. Now I've started a new farmer mode um, and there's a reason for that which again I'll explain later but I've made quite a few changes particularly to the land that we own and the equipment that we have so let's go and take a look around. So we're in the month of uh, September, our fields have all been harvested and as you can see it's a bit of a wet and miserable morning um, uh, and this is the main kind of yard or arable yard really um, where most of our kind of uh, machinery is kept um, and uh, you can see kind of in front of me here um, we've kind of dropped the straw um, for field three here and field six that's just over the road um, but this uh, wet weather this morning is going to hamper us getting this kind of sorted um, but that's going to be one of our sort of first tasks. Um, so uh, before I have a look around the farm with you and show some of the machinery we've got let's have a quick look at the map now as I said beforehand um, this is an established uh, family farm so we've kind of um, added to the land that we own quite a bit so we own um, field 3 um, 15 where the cow pasture is we own field 6 and 10 um, and then over the other side of the little stream we've also got fields 25 and 16 um, and then further down the track going over towards the um, garden center we've also got field 19 uh, 20 22 and 23 and then we also own the sheep pasture and field 4 which is under grass um, now we've also got fields uh, 22 and 10 out there that are under grass the rest of them are all arable crops and if we take a quick look at the growth stage there you can see um, that our main kind of arable f uh, fields have all been harvested 3, 6, 25, 16 and 17 only recently um, and we've also cultivated fields 19, 20 and 23. Now we're going to put a crop of oilseed rape or canola into those three fields ready for next year um, so they're kind of almost ready for uh, uh, drilling or there's a few other things that we do need to take care of um, if we go and have a look at the soil composition um, you can see that pretty much all of the fields um, need liming um, and uh, we've also got some kind of weeds um, in those kind of uh, fields that we've only recently harvested as well and also over in field 20 um, so we need to take care of those before we put the next uh, year's crop in the ground now our main focus is really on the arable side of things but we do have 80 dairy cows um, that are out uh, grazing in the field here. Um, now I did put a manure bunker in here. I know sometimes you can get a few sort of problems in FS22 with kind of manure um, uh, not materialising. So I kind of put this in place uh, and sort of filled it manually just to um, add for a little bit of extra kind of realism really more than anything else. Um, but in addition to that also kind of inside uh, the cow shed I've also used um, the, new, the manure mod as well. Um, so I've kind of placed that in here so hopefully we will get um, some uh, manure you can see there kind of some of it's just beginning to spawn that we can then um, we'll have to kind of clear out in uh, in the future so that will add a little bit of realism to things as well um, right I'll just go and show you some of the equipment that we have here as well so this is our little case tractor um, this is the kind of stockman's tractor really um, uh, we've got a few other bits of equipment here front loader got our straw blower and our forage mixing wagon um, so that's pretty much all we need for uh, the cows we've got some bale storage kind of around the corner as well um, and if I just pop out around the side here you will see that some of our equipment um, our grass equipment we've got our mowers in here um, and, uh, and then I think next door, uh, if I remember correctly, we've also got our windrow. So we've uh, got a bit of storage over here and then just over the road as well. Um, we've got our, um, some bale storage in here at the moment. Um, we've got our flatbed uh, bale trailer, got some straw, uh, got some silage bales here left over from last year. And then tucked away in the shed here is our bale wrapper. Uh, as you can see, that's the only thing that's in here. And in addition to the cows, we've also got 140 uh, sheep of different breeds. Um, so they're kind of out grazing in the field here and uh, they have access to the field that's beyond there as well. We mainly use that for cutting grass. Um, and we do do quite a bit of grass work, um, uh, some of which we keep for our animals, some of which we kind of sell. We've got a rainbow there. Hopefully the sun's going to be coming out soon. Um, the old shed down here, uh, we cleared out. Uh, it was full of junk, but we got rid of that. We've got some um, hay bales in there as well for uh, feed for the sheep. 
Now equipment wise, um, as I mentioned beforehand, this is kind of a fairly sizable and established um, family farm. So um, the equipment is pretty good, uh, which I've kind of kitted out as you would probably expect a big operational farm like this. Um, so we've got our um, discovery, uh, couldn't do without that on the farm. Um, we've got um, uh, good old Amazon Furt Spreader here. Uh, we've got our hardy uh, mounted sprayer. Uh, we've got a Cavernland um, cultivator, and then we've got our uh, 8RX. Um, this is kind of our main uh, workhorse. Does uh, most of the big heavy cultivating and um, uh, and such like. We've got a couple of um, cluster Carla combines as well. I'll show you those shortly. And um, just around here, we've also got our uh, 12 meter Delbo rolls as well. Um, and then if I just duck around the corner as well, where the um, grain silo output is um, then inside here uh, we've got another sort of John Deere we've got our Vedastad drill um, we've got a, uh, a fairly heavy set of um, uh, discs there as well uh, and then we've got our JCB and we've recently taken delivery of um, some fertilizer and some seed ready for autumn drilling and then just around the corner here as well we've got a few other bits of kit um, we've got uh, a, a hoe um, we try not to use herbicides sort of too much if we can avoid it try to catch the weeds early um, we've also got uh, a light harrow here as well and sometimes we uh, kind of just use this a bit like a stubble rake or a straw rake um, go over the um, the stubble once we've kind of finished um, hopefully that will uh, bring up the weeds um, then we can kind of um, use the hoe to get rid of those before we kind of go drilling uh, the plow we use occasionally um, we do rotate our grass uh, fields so we kind of leave them under grass for three years and then we'll rotate them into an arable crop um, so every time we do that we do use the plow because um, if not you can get some problems with that grass kind of uh, coming back and then we've got a little um, simple mulcher here as well uh, which we don't uh, use for mulching any of the actual fields but we tend to do all of our grass margins with this um, kind of pre-harvest and post-harvest uh, just to kind of keep them fairly neat and tidy. And then tucked away in the uh, grain store here, um, we've also got our two combines. Um, so there's our pair of class decanos. Now we decided to go for um, something a little bit smaller on the combine front. Uh, some of the little lanes around here are pretty narrow um, and it's a bit difficult to get some big kit down there. So um, opted to go for um, a pair of these uh, combines that are slightly smaller, slightly smaller headers, um, but uh, they help us cover um, the amount of ground that we've got. And then we've also got um, our sort of other medium tracks. This is a Massey Ferguson 6718. Um, and then uh, we've got our Flegel uh, grain trailer there as well. Um, so they've been kind of busy over the last um, few days, a uh, few weeks, uh, getting all the harvest in and they're in need of a good service and a good clean but we'll come on to that in a little while. Um, and then this is our workshop, um, we also use it for chemical storage so we have got a little bit of herbicide in here if we need it. Um, we've got um, uh, a little air, uh, air pressure there uh, that we use for um, blowing all our combines out and uh, all the dust and everything out of uh, radiators and things like that on the tractors uh, and then we've got our workshop here as well which is uh, obviously very important and then back round to the main entrance of the farm uh, we've got our fertilizer tanks here as well I've recently taken delivery uh, for those so we've got that all uh, set and ready for the autumn um, and then back round to the kind of main yard um, so uh, so that's the tour of the farm and uh, I think now we need to kind of crack on with uh, some of our work and uh, like I said one of the most important things that we want to try and do um, is get this straw picked up. Um, the weather forecast over the next few days um, is kind of not looking great but uh, hopefully the sun's going to come out a little bit later. Um, now the only thing that we might have to do is have a fair old soaking so we might have to uh, ted this straw, um, re-windrow it and then get it baled. Um, and and uh, whilst we're doing that we're also going to see if we can take care of some of those weeds needs. Now before I start uh, getting on with some of our work, just a couple of other things that I wanted to, to um, sort of cover off. Um, and uh, I mentioned earlier that I had started in new farmer mode and part of the reason for that um, is because I wanted to have access um, to all the sort of uh, common areas of land uh, which are highlighted here on the map as you can kind of see mainly around the perimeter of the map but there's a few kind of that are in the middle um, sort of up this area sort of a woodland here, this piece here um, and uh, that sort of thing. Now if you start in farm manager mode or start from scratch um, you obviously don't own any land uh, but there isn't an option to buy those uh, common areas of, uh, of ground now whether that will change um, with future sort of map releases I think Oxy uh, is due to kind of release uh, a little bit of an update um, probably sometime this week uh, that may kind of change things a little bit but um, uh, just so you're aware uh, you can't kind of purchase those at the moment um, if uh, you're in farm manager mode or start from scratch so there's, um, there's a few things that I might want to do with those plots of land in the future 
nature. So that's the reason I started in new farmer mode. Uh, now the other thing as well is if I have a look at the calendar, now there's another YouTuber called uh, Disturbed, two words, um, uh, and I'll put a link down in the description to um, kind of his video, but he has done a UK geo uh, or kind of growth calendar. Um, and as you can see here, we now have the ability to be able to plant um, spring crops of wheat, barley and canola in March and April. Um, previously, it was only oats that you could kind of um, plant at that time of the year. Um, he's extended the... Um, uh, uh, the kind of harvesting period as well made that a little bit longer and also extended the autumn kind of drilling um, planting uh, season as well so um, so that's really good so he's um, created this geo and um, he's done a little video on how to uh, install it so I would certainly recommend that you go uh, pop along and have a look at that because um, it's fairly straightforward to install and it does make a big difference in terms of what you can do on this UK map and just a quick recap as well um, of some of the work that we've been up to over the last sort of few days. Um, we seem to be chasing the weather a little bit in August, um, uh, trying to get the harvest in. But uh, on some of the dry days that we had, we had to work uh, kind of late into the night. Um, so we had uh, fields uh, 3, 6, 25 and 16. Uh, two of those had barley in them. Uh, one of them had wheat and uh, our big field 16 had um, oilseed rape in it um, so uh, we managed to get those done um, got all the grain uh, into the grain bins um, so we kind of uh, managed to do it sort of fairly successfully before we got to the end of August uh, where potentially uh, we drifted into September the crop could have withered um, so we're pleased uh, that we managed to get that in and um, the fields are kind of in a reasonable state we dropped the straw in fields 3 and uh, 6 so we do need to collect that so that's one of the tasks for today uh, but we've got a Wait, uh, wait for that rain to ease off um, so fairly productive a um, few days uh, but there's uh, plenty of more work to do right well I think that's you all caught up now um, so uh, we've got quite a bit of work to crack on and do we've got weeds to take care of uh, we've got some lime spreading to do uh, and then we've also got to sort that straw out and try and get that in off the field now we don't own all of the equipment that we need but in an effort to do things a little bit differently and perhaps a little bit more realistically um, instead of leasing vehicles from the local dealership um, uh, I've set up kind of a contractor that comes and helps us from time to time with some of the work that we do. Um, so that's with our baling, our muck spreading and our lime spreading. So I've set him up in one of the sheds that's down at the biogas plant. So he's got a big old fent tractor down here, um, he's got this crone baler as well and that's got uh, the silage additive on it which is good for when we're doing our grass work. Um, and then uh, got this Bergman um, lime spreader uh, which also doubles up as a, as a um, muck spreader as well. Uh, now that requires a fair old amount of power, it's quite a big piece of kit so um, he comes and does uh, most of that for us. Now the only challenge that we've got at the moment is we need some lime spreading doing and uh, we also need some baling doing so um, we might have to borrow some of his kits so we can kind of get on with that at the same time that he's doing uh, um, some of the other work. Well the rain is starting to ease off a little bit but uh, it's still drizzling as you can see so first things first I'm going to get the old Massey um, put onto the uh, weeder here get it taken down to um, field 20 and then we can start getting that field sorted. Now another nice feature on the map um, and something Oxen David has done beforehand is that when it rains the roads flood um, so that's kind of really nice. Uh, so we're on the little lane that just runs past the church um, and another nice little feature as well is that when you drive past the church you can hear um, someone playing the organ inside. Um, so we're going to head up here, um, uh, our fields uh, are kind of just on the both the left and the right hand side. Um, now I'm going to put a helper into here, um, I'm using course play um, so we'll use that and get that set up as well. Uh, so field 23 there is just through the gate on the right hand side and field 19 here uh, runs all the way up along the side of the lane on the left hand side. Uh, so I'll get this into the field and um, we'll get him set up and underway. Okay so we've got him all set up, um, he started the first trip around the headland uh, so that's good. Uh, fair size field I guess um, but this uh, row guard is 9 metres wide so hopefully it won't take too long to uh, finish this off. Um, now uh, um, as I said I mentioned I am using course play, um, I will go through some of the setups um, during the course of the videos for that uh, but we've got quite a lot to do um, this afternoon so I'm keen to kind of get on with um, uh, things as best as I can. Uh, so I'm going to leave this Massey uh, here to get this field done and uh, we'll get off to do some other work. So next up on the list uh, is getting some of this lime spreading sorted out. So um, we're heading off down to the BGA. Um, our contractor is going to do the baling for us a little bit later this afternoon. So I've got to go and pick up that Bergman lime spreader. Um, now, like I said, uh, that requires about 300 horsepower um, uh, in terms of tractor size. So we're in the 8RX. 
um, going to go and pick that up. Now we will head off up to the garden centre as well. Uh, we'll fill up with lime um, from the uh, from the sell point up there. So we pay for the lime and everything. Uh, we just pay um, normally uh, for the lease and the hire of the uh, the lime spreader and uh, the time for the contractor to come and do our work. But we're going to be doing it today. Uh, so I'm heading off to the BGO that you can see just over there on the right hand side. Um, so once I've got that picked up, um, we'll head off up to the garden centre. So the garden centre is uh, situated at the top west corner of the map. Um, so we're just filling up with lime here. You can see that Bogman um, spread is pretty tall, uh, only just about fits underneath the spout there. Um, so we'll get this um, filled up and uh, we'll head off down the field. Um, uh, the gateway to field 19 is kind of down the bottom of the uh, the lane, um, sort of closer to the church. I think it might be a bit of a squeeze trying to get in there, but um, hopefully we'll be okay. Um, now we're going to be using course play again. Um, so the hell looks great, doesn't it? That 8RX uh, with that big Bergman spreader on the back. Um, so I'm going to leave this uh, to get on with this and um, then uh, we're going to see if we can get some of that straw sorted out the sun's come out so hopefully things uh, will dry soon enough and we ought to get it bailed and off the field Right, we've got uh, the tether on uh, the back of the little case here, um, so I'm just going to take him round uh, the yard to the other side of the field, um, just tuck him into um, uh, the corner here, and then we can kind of set up uh, course play um, and get him underway. Um, so I'm just going to pull up here, I'll just unfold the implement, uh, I'll back him up into this corner and um, then we'll just go into the course play menu and get that set up. Um, so all we really need to do here, once we've got him in position, um, you can see the little course play menu at the bottom there. I'm just going to click on that. That brings up the menu. Um, now the working width at the top there, um, you can see, is kind of automatically set. Um, uh, we're doing up and down rows. I've set headland courses to sharp. Uh, we're going to do three rows around uh, the headland for this, um, and we're going to head clockwise. Uh, and then the headland overlap, I'm just going to nudge that down to 5%. Um, and I think everything else should be absolutely fine. I can keep that as is. Uh, so we'll generate the course. Um, that will kind of pop up in the field. You can probably just see it behind uh, the graphic there. And um, there you go, you can see that in the field. Uh, and now all I need to do is uh, collect, uh, select first waypoint and just hit the little play button um, and off he goes. Um, so that's really good and um, very similar to um, how course play I guess was in FS19. Uh, but I really like the interface. I'm still kind of getting used to it a little bit. Um, I'm just going to slide that down into the corner as well. Uh, just sort of tuck it out of the way, but uh, enough that I can still see it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's um, I'm still getting used to it a little bit, but uh, uh, quite kind of nice and easy interface uh, to use now. Uh, this is in sort of beta testing still at the moment, um, and I know that there are sort of um, updated versions that are being bought out. If you haven't got it already, um, I would strongly recommend that you only get it from GitHub. Um, so if you do a Google search for uh, GitHub FS22 uh, course plate, you will find it easy enough. Um, and uh, you can download the zip folder, drop it into your mods folder and um, uh, go from there and uh, if need be um, I know that the farm sim guy has done a little video tutorial to show you how to do that if you're not 100% sure um, so uh, uh, go and check his video out if you need to um, now the other thing is you may be thinking why on earth am I tedding the straw? Um, ordinarily, as soon as the sun comes out, it stops raining, you'd be able to stick a baler on this and uh, go off and bale it. But uh, uh, one of the things that I wanted to do in this series was really um, kind of bring in some uh, elements of realism and things that I um, have uh, experience of um, in some of my kind of farming and uh, also uh, things that I know that local farmers do in my area. Um, and certainly if you've had a fair amount of rain on some straw like this, uh, you would look to uh, uh, ted it to spread it out or turn it so the sun can get on it get it dried um, and then windrow it back up and kind of bale it um, if you don't do that there's a risk that the straw would still be damp and then it would just rot in the bale um, so as part of this series I kind of want to bring in some of those elements of realism um, that are, to, uh, are kind of familiar with you know some of the things that I see happening on farms nearby so our bailing contractor is just arriving up at the yard here. Um, he's a little bit early. We haven't started windrowing yet, but um, uh, good that he's uh, kind of turned up. So the next thing we need to do is get the windrow underway. Uh, so we'll use course play again uh, to do that, and um, he can kind of follow uh, the tether around now. I wanted the uh, tether to sort of get far enough ahead um, so that they didn't end up sort of uh, clashing into each other. But I'm going to let these two kind of get on with everything, um, and then we'll go and get the bailer man set up. 
So I've positioned the bowler in exactly the same place, at exactly the same start point. Um, and the most important thing here, um, the process is kind of the same in terms of setting up course play, but what I need to do is set the working width to exactly the same as the wind drawer, which was 28.5 uh, feet. Um, so in that way, it will follow the same course as the wind drawer. Um, so I'm just gonna make sure that that is accurate and correct. And then all the other settings I need to make sure are the same as well. Uh, so sharp um, headland corners, um, number of headlands only two, and I'll take the overlap down to 5% as well and then everything else uh, should pretty much remain the same. Uh, so again I will generate the course um, and that should pretty much kind of copy everything. All I need to do is just nudge him past that little kind of start arrow just to make sure he doesn't go onto the second headland row. Um, press the little start button and away he goes and as you can see um, he's now following uh, the uh, row of straw quite nicely um, and starting to bail. Now this is a real um, kind of godsend in, in many respects. Didn't really have this in FS19 course play. Um, had to do your own kind of bailing or if you could I wasn't aware of how to do it. Um, uh, so having this capability um, to be able to set up, off a bailer and do this bit of work is, um, is really kind of useful. Um, and you can also do um, bail collecting as well which is um, another godsend so you really kind of can automate um, the whole process. Okay, so uh, perhaps time to uh, sit back and enjoy these guys doing a little bit of straw work. So we've moved the tether over to field six now, uh, so he's getting on quite nicely. The sun's um, getting nice and warm, so it's really drying the straw out. And our windrower and our bowler are getting on quite nicely in field three. Um, so that's it for today's video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this opening episode here on Carmsden Farm. Um, and uh, so thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then it would be great if you could do so. So take care, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, stay safe. And I will catch you on Carmsden Farm next time. Bye for now.